Welcome back to Hot Water Wrestling, everybody. And uh, I'm here doing a response for freaking Yeah Yeah 88. Uh, what would you do if you were in charge of the WWE video? Um, thanks to him and both Gold Dizzy for inspiring me to get off my ass and do this. Actually, I'm doing it on a, uh, a Monday at 10.45 a.m. Eastern Time. Oh, shame on me. I should be working. I have a lot of work to do today, actually, but I'm going to take a breath to do this because I can. So the first thing I would do, um, this is in no particular order, so I can't say first order of business, but first, first thing I would do is I would improve the tag team division. Yes, um, I think this is what everyone wants. Um, I've heard this in several videos. Um, we've got to bring prestige back to the tag team division. There's no reason not to have a strong tag team division. I've uh, made several videos on this. Um, not only is it a lot of fun and for every reason we know, but uh, it keeps good workers busy. You know, guys like Ted DiBiase or uh, Jack Swagger, or, uh, what, what have you, um, you know, I can't think of that many right now, but you know what I'm trying to say is that, you know, instead of having these BS feuds or these, you know, angles that really go nowhere, put these guys in a good tag team, you know? I mean, like, you know, Kofi Kingston, for example, you know, he he's in a tag team right now with Evan Bourne. I think that's a good, healthy thing for those two workers. Although I think, you know, Kofi would be a better IC champion, but he's in a tag team. So bring the tag team back. What I would do is I would, number two, is I would hold workers off TV to keep things more fresh and special. Yes, there's no reason that a guy like Randy Orton or John Cena or Christian or what have you should um, be on TV each and every week. Um, if you keep, if, if you do, uh, excuse me, <laughs> if your writing is good enough and your angles are good enough, you can keep your TV program interesting without having to drag out your top stars every single show. Back when wrestling was on, back in the day, they didn't have Hulk Hogan or Macho Man on every single episode. You could see a, a, the feature match would feature maybe Jake the Snake Roberts or Ricky the Dragon Steamboat, you know, and it would still be very interesting. Why? Because the wrestling mattered and the writing was good. And I'm not saying keep these guys off TV for a long time, but it would be great anticipating on Raw. Is Orton going to show up? Is Cena going to show up? What's going to happen? You know, who who's going to be on the show this week? You know, and, and you could have a guy like Orton on, on the show three weeks in a row. But, you know, the, sometimes I feel like they bring these big guys on for no reason. They just give them time and they blah, 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 and it waters things down. And it's just not as special. So I, I, I would hold guys off of TV to keep things more special and also to give people a break. Bring back managers? Absolutely. Both Yaya and uh, Gold Dizzy said this. I could not agree more. Um, I'm not going to get into why because they've said it in their videos, but it would absolutely help talent that's not good on the mic. And, you know, uh, managers just have a flair to them. They're interesting. Bring back the blood. Now, I'm not, you know saying attitude era blood you know blood all the time but when it calls for it we need to see it um, especially in a pay-per-view like hell in a cell to me it's completely ridiculous to have a pay-per-view hell in a cell that's completely dry with no blood i mean part of the reason you order it and part of the thing that makes a cage match or a hell in a cell match exciting is you're saying when's he going to get cut open who's going to get cut open what's going to happen that's a big part of the excitement of those matches um the violence it really is um you know and then on raw some sometimes they do need to have a little blood when they scrap outside the ring or whatnot to up the ante a little bit you know they don't have to go overboard with it like they did in the attitude era but we definitely need to see the blood come back for those uh, high stipulation cage matches. And then that goes along with making the program TV 14 again, getting rid of PG. I would cut my pay-per-views to 10 a year. Um, I know that's a high number. A lot of people have suggested, you know, six or eight or five. Um, I, I think, you know, we are in the information age right now. There's a lot of stuff going on all the time. Um, so 
I don't think we could really get down the five, but 10 seems like a good number. And frickin' Yaya yeah, yeah, had a great idea about Saturday night's main event, so maybe we could just say we'll cut it down to eight pay-per-views and have uh, two of those become high stipulation Saturday night main events on NBC. But uh, either or, we'll look at it like 10 pay-per-views a year. And a big reason I would do that, and this is if I was in charge, my next idea would be to start a subscription service to the WWE, which would include your pay-per-views, DVDs, magazines, apps, website with um, you know bonus content and exclusive content. Um, th this this would you know providing oh providing a priority seating for a fan club member or a subscription member. This way. Kind of like when you order the NFL package uh, for your satellite dish, if you want all the football games, you pay 150 bucks a year and you get all the games. I don't know exactly what the price would be because um, I haven't really sat down and thought of it because it's not my job to run the WWE, but I would find a good price, a reasonable price. And so basically, like for example, when WrestleMania came on, you would automatically get it. A DVD would be sent to your house after the show if you were going to the event, you would be able to have priority seating um, and you would get WWE to magazine, maybe a special fan club magazine, maybe a quarterly newsletter. Do something very interesting and good for the fans who are your dedicated fans to make them feel special. And so we don't have to think about it anymore. You just, you pay, you know, if you're gonna pay 60 bucks a pay-per-view and there's 10, well, that's $600. Maybe you sell, the package for 400 bucks you know something like that you buy them all up front you pay 400 bucks you're in for the year um, if, if I was having to keep all the pay-per-views we have the price would probably not be as affordable so I would have to probably say we'll give discounts you know you pay 400 bucks you get X amount of pay-per-views and all the other stuff and maybe discount uh, some of the secondary pay-per-views. We won't spend too much time on that, but a subscription service would be very nice where all the things are sent to you and you got an app and you're an insider and you're done. All right, um, <clears throat> restore prestige to the Intercontinental title. Absolutely. Um, there's no reason why the Intercontinental title should be used as a prop. I mean, almost every title in the WWE uses a prop. I guess the WWE Championship and World Heavyweight Championship still have a tinge of prestige, but um, that has been questionable. So, yeah, I think everybody agrees. We need to just really get prestige uh, injected into our titles. Um, I would make the U.S. title more of a cruiserweight kind of title. I, I never loved the name cruiserweight title. Um, because I think it limits who holds it, like, you know, like Brodus Clay. I don't know if you guys have heard of him. I know a lot of you have. He's a guy, you know, big guy, but he's a developmental worker, you could say, or a rookie, or, you know, a newbie. Um, so I would use the U.S. slash cruiserweight title, however you wanted to look at it, um, for developmental workers, for younger workers. It's a thing that the younger guys go for. Now, I understand the Intercontinental title used to serve that purpose. However, the Intercontinental title was normally used for guys who were probably deserving of holding the World Heavyweight or WWE Heavyweight Championship. Um, and, and, and they were about to just get over the hump, you know? If, like, Jake the Snake Roberts never held it, he probably should have. Like, Ricky the Dragon, Steamboat, and Macho Man Savage, and Greg the Hammer Valentine. You know, all these, all these guys could have been, you know, WWE champions. They had much longer title reigns back then, so they had the Intercontinental Championship. Um, the fact that, you know, Jake the Snake Roberts never held that belt, that'll show you how prestigious it was back then. Guys did not drop it easily. I mean, the Honky Tonk Man held on that belt forever. You know, when they gave it to Ultimate Warrior, it's what made him a star. So, the U.S. title, and that's what I would call it, actually, because um, it would be for everybody, all weight classes, but it would be more used as a developmental title, um, the baby title, and then your next would be the Intercontinental and then the WWE. Have stronger, more meaningful alliances, number eight. Um, you know, 
I was never a big fan of the Nexus angle after the original Nexus. Um, I thought it made sense coming off that show with Wade Barrett and those guys, but once they brought CM Punk into it, and it, it, was just, it just kind of became completely unnecessary. The core was even more unnecessary. And all too often do we see these unnecessary alliances that go nowhere. Um, Legacy, I thought, was well done uh, for what it was. Um, that was closer to what I'd like to see because I did think there was some meaning and some weight and substance behind uh, Legacy. But I, uh, there's something to be said for having those strong alliances. They like the manager. They add a lot of flair to the program and can drive storylines. Number nine, hire great writers, fire all the bad ones. Absolutely. Um, I couldn't agree more with this. Uh, the writers right now, I, I don't think they really care about wrestling. Um, when I did that, I would add wrestling back into <laughs> the name because it is a wrestling company, and I would make WWE more of a wrestling company. Um, yeah. And is that it? Did I actually do 10? I guess I did do 10 because I, my last one was start the subscription, so I have done my 10. So those are the changes I would make. I'm sorry this video seems a little rushed, but I shouldn't actually be doing it right now. Even though there's no one here, I'm going to whisper. <laughs> no one here yet. But uh, anyways, guys, I hope you had a good day. And leave your video response, leave your comments, and I'll talk to you soon. See you next time on Hot Water Wrestling. Aloha. Mahalo. I mean, mahalo.